Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and this video is going to be on matrix multiplication. We're going to cover three main topics. The first is matrix multiplication, how to do it. After that, we're going to talk about the properties of matrix multiplication. Then we're going to introduce the transpose and talk about the transpose properties. So before we talk about matrix multiplication, we're going to quick recall what we learned already for matrix vector multiplication. We learned that we had two different ways to take the matrix A and multiply it by some vector X. We said we had the row vector technique, that's defined by this first thing up here, where we basically take the first row of the matrix and are multiplying it by the vector. So I multiply those components together and then I add them up. So I take A11 times X1, that piece right here, A12 times X1, times X2, and then add that to A13 times X3. So I take that pro those products and I add them together that should give me the first row of my matrix. Now, the second way I can multiply two matrices together is treating that multiplication as a linear combination of the columns. So I take x1 times the first column, plus x2 times the second column, plus x3 times the third column. All right, so now why the refresher on vector multiplication if we're talking about matrix multiplication? Because matrix multiplication is really just an extension of what we already know about matrix vector multiplication. We can think of some matrix A and some matrix B, and we can look at the columns of B and treat them like individual column vectors. And if we think about it that way, then multiplying A times this collection of vectors is just a new matrix, or each of the columns is A times the columns of B. So this is how we can visualize that multiplication. Now let's go through a couple examples to really demonstrate. So let's look at these three examples. So I have some matrix A times some matrix B. And I can treat that B really like the matrix of two column vectors. And so the product here should be A times the first vector. And the second column should be A times the second vector. So let's see what that looks like. If I take that first product, my first column of the product here, a times B1, it's taking this column times first this row. So that would give me 1 times 2 plus 0 times 1. And the second component would be this row times that column. 0 times 2 plus 1 times 1. And the last component of this first column of the product of the matrix would be this row times that first column. So this would be 0 times 2 plus 2 times 1. So that gives me this first piece, A times the first column of B. Now let's look at the second column. So we'll move this piece over right underneath its column. And now we're looking at the first row times the second column. Here we'll have 1 times 0 plus 0 times 3. Moving on to this pair, 0 times 0 plus 1 times 3. And lastly, this pair. So 0 times 0 plus 2 times 3. And then all we do is simplify all those operations. Looks like I get 2 and 1 and 2. And the second column should be 0, 3, and 6. And so this is the matrix A times B. Now at this point, why don't you pause the video and see if you can think about the next two. Calculate the next two and then think about number 3. Now if I go to that last one, number three, as I start to set this up and try to take this row times this column, I see the dimensions don't match. I would get two times one plus one times two plus I don't know. And so what that's going to tell me here is I can't do this multiplication. As it turns out, the dimensions of both of the matrices involved need to be appropriate for me to be able to do this multiplication, just like they did when we did the matrix vector multiplication. So just like then, as we can see in this above example, the rows of the second matrix must line up with the columns of the first matrix. So in this middle case for number two, this was a two by four matrix. The second matrix was a four by three matrix. These inside values need to match the rows of the second matrix and the columns of the first one. And if we can look ahead to the product that we had in the end, this product was a 2 by 3 matrix. 
And that's not a surprise. Turns out that when we take this a times b, the dimensions of the product will equal these outside values. So to do the multiplication, these inside numbers have to ma match up, and the result will be the dimensions of these outside numbers. The result will be a 2 by 3 in this case. So to think more about that, if I have some matrix A and it's a 4 by 2, and some matrix B and it's 2 by 3, then the product, the dimensions of the product A times B, well, we can do the multiplication because both are inside values of 2, and the net result will be a 4 by 3 matrix, a 4 by 3 matrix in the final product. And if we take those same matrices and flip them around, what will be the dimensions of BA? Well, it turns out this is a trick question. Because once again, if B is a 2 by 3 and A is a 4 by 2, we can't even do that multiplication because those inside values don't match. So if we can take the product AB but not the product BA, that certainly tells us something that's a little interesting. It tells us the product AB is not always equal to BA. Clearly, in the last case, it wasn't because it wasn't defined for one of those directions. So... The order that we multiply matrices is an extremely important piece. And so as we look ahead now to matrix properties, you'll notice that many of these look very familiar. This first one, for instance, looks like the associative property. This looks like an associative property. In this case, we're talking about matrix multiplication. And the next two both look like, like distributive properties. But one question might be why are there two distributive properties? Well, one we can see is left distributive and one is right distributive because once again, the order of the product matters. A times the matrix as B plus C is not necessarily the same as B plus C times the matrix A. The order of the multiplication is important. And the last one is essentially an associative property with scalar multiplication. But once again, to highlight, the missing one is that this is not, not commutative. In other words, AB is not necessarily equal to BA. In some specific cases, it might be. But in general, those two things are not equal. <clears throat> the last problem to talk about relates to the identity matrix. So we introduced last time what an identity matrix is a diagonal matrix with just ones on the diagonal. And so the special property of the identity matrix is related to the idea of matrix multiplication. If I have a matrix, for instance, 2, 3, 1, 0, 0, 1, just some random matrix A, and this happens to be a 3 by 2, <clears throat> if I wanted to multiply it on the right by the identity, well, just to be able to do the multiplication, this would have to be a 2 by 2. And so I'm talking about this identity matrix. And when I do that multiplication, I might say, what's my first column? Well, it's that matrix times this first column. And if I did that multiplication as a linear combination, it says one of the first, take one of the first column plus zero of the second column, which would give me exactly the first column. Now that same argument to find the second column of the product would leave me just the second column of the original matrix. So the point here is any matrix times identity is just the original matrix. And that's true whether I multiply by on the right or on the left. However, if I was going to multiply on the left, because I would need it to ma make sure these dimensions match up, in that case I would have to have this a 3 by 3 identity matrix. So the dimensions might change, but the idea is identity matrix times some other matrix doesn't change the value of that matrix. So the next thing we're going to introduce quickly is what we mean by powers of a matrix. So here I have a matrix cubed. And so what exactly does that mean? Well, it means the same thing it does when we take numbers and cube. It means take this thing and multiply it by itself three times. So for instance, in this case, we are not taking the cube of the components, but rather we are taking this matrix times itself three times. That's what that means to raise a matrix to a power. Now, if you want to do that, if we had some matrix that was an m by n matrix, then this would be m by n, and this would be m by n, and this would be m by n. And so we can see that if we're actually able to do this multiplication, 
A must be a special matrix. It must be true that N and M are the same value. So in other words, this only holds if A is a square matrix. And the last thing we want to do kind of by definition is define what we mean by A raised to the zero power. And just like if I took any number and raised it to the zero power, I would get one. If I take any matrix and raise it to the zero power, by definition, I get the identity matrix of that size. All right, the next thing we want to introduce is the transpose of a matrix A. So the transpose of a matrix A, which we denote by A, this little T kind of in the superscript, this transpose is made by using the columns of A as the rows of our new matrix A transpose. So in other words, to form this A transpose, we take all the components, A, I, J, and we switch their position, we switch their rows and columns. So for this first example, if this is my matrix A, then I would take the first column of A and make it my first row of A transpose. So I'd have one, four, seven. I would take the second column and make it the second row. I would make the third column and make it the third row. And so we can just flip the rows and columns and then we can look at the individual pieces. This piece right here, this would be a second row, first column, and that moved to this position right here, which is a first row, second column. So we can see once again, those individual component values are changed as well. Now this is not true just for square matrices. So we can do the same thing with a non-square matrix. Here we have a three by two matrix. And if I took the first row, the first column, and I made it my first row, my new matrix, so let's call this thing a transpose then, would be two, six, three in the first row, and one, nine, four in the second row. And we'd be able to see that this matrix is now a two by three matrix. So this is the definition of what the transpose is in an example. Now let's think about some transpose properties. So we listed six here, we're gonna talk about them real briefly. I've written down the left-hand side, and we're going to try to see if we can generate the right-hand side of these transpose properties. So if I have some matrix A, here is my matrix A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if I were to transpose this thing, well, the result would be 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6. Now, of course, if I take this matrix, and transpose that, well then what would I get? Well then I would get one, two as the first row, one, two, then three, four, and then five, six, which of course is right back to where I started from. So A, the transpose of a transpose is just the matrix A. Now look at the next one. The next one is the transpose of the sum. In this case, it turns out to be the sum of the transpose. And we really should kind of just think about the individual pieces to make this make sense. We know that when we add two matrices, we're just adding them components-wise. So whether I add the components and then move, move their position, or I move their positions respectively and then add them, it really doesn't matter the order. Same thing with this next one. The transpose of R times A is just R times the transpose of A because all multiplying by some number does is multiply all of the components of that matrix, regardless of what position they're in. Now the next one is not trivial. This says the transpose of a product. And we do get the product of the transposes, but the key idea here is that the result will be in the reverse order. So the transpose of A times B is B transpose times A transpose. So let's just uh, talk about the dimensions of these matrices to see why this might, although it might not intuitively make sense, why at least units-wise or at least dimensions-wise it makes sense. So if I have A, and let's just call this thing a three by two matrix, and I'm multiplying it by B, which happens to be a two by four matrix. Well, I surely should be able to do that calculation. And if I did, the resulting matrix would be a three by four matrix. So I'm gonna take this thing, and I'm gonna take the transpose of this. Whatever I get as a result, if this product is three by four, then its transpose should be four by three. 
But now let's try to take the trans the just the product of the transposes like this. Well, in this case, A transpose should have dimensions 2 by 3, and B should have dimensions 4 by 2. So in that case, I won't even be able to do the multiplication. But if I switch that order, as my property is telling me to do a B transpose and A transpose, well, B transpose should be a 4 by 2 matrix, and A transpose should be a 2 by 3 matrix. So I should be able to actually do that multiplication. And the result should be a 4 by 3 matrix. So while that's not a proof that this property holds, it's a little dimensional analysis that makes us certainly feel much better. And the last one is what happens when we transpose the identity matrix. Well, if we look at the identity matrix, I'm just going to draw a 3 by 3 identity matrix. And I take the transpose of this matrix. Well, all the entries on the diagonal stay the same. And all these zeros just switch back and forth. So in this case, identity transpose is just identity. So once again, while not a proof, this is just a quick kind of heuristic ju justification for some of these key properties. And the last thing we'll talk about with respect to properties is some warnings. So we have a couple quick warnings here about things that we can't take for granted when we're talking about matrix multiplication. We've already talked about the first one that AB is not necessarily equal to BA. Matrix multiplication is not commutative. But let's look at these next two warnings. The next one says AB is equal to AC does not necessarily mean B is equal to C. And the last one says AB equals 0 does not necessarily mean that A is 0 or B is 0. Now this might seem pretty surprising because these are properties that we should be very familiar with, but only because we've seen them in the real numbers. And so why doesn't this work? Well, let's take a look at the second one. If we kind of think about this in just in terms of real numbers, it seems like this that this product, if I had 2 times 3 equal to 2 times some number, I really want to say that that number has to be 3. And in real numbers, I can say that. Because if I wanted to show that, all I would have to do is multiply both sides of this equation by 1 half. I could take 1 half of this side, times one half of this side. One half of two times three, and one half of two times number, and one half times two would be one, which would leave me just a three on this side, and one half times two over here would be one, I would just be left with number. And so I control, can show that this is true. Another way you could think about this is dividing both sides by two. But what I've shown here is that dividing both sides by two is really multiplying by an inverse. We multiply by the inverse of 2. Or for real numbers, that's a reciprocal of 2. So the question is, can we do this for matrices? If we want to show that AB is equal to AC, and that this implies that B is equal to C, we need to show that we can multiply both sides by some inverse thing and just simplify to B equals C. This is what we'd like to do. So the question is, is there this special inverse thing? And the answer is sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next section. So for now, that concludes this video on matrix multiplication.